Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And today is another video in the five minute logic expert series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing and mastering in logic in 30 days. And today we're talking about project alternatives. Now this probably won't be my most popular video because it's not a cool, sexy topic, but I'm actually pretty confident this is gonna be one of your favorite videos if you don't already know project alternatives. And even if you do already know project alternatives, I'm gonna share some ideas of how you can use them that will make this something that you use all the time. Out of all the videos in the series, this is gonna be in my top handful of things that you're gonna use constantly. So stick with me, you're gonna love this video. But let's first talk about what exactly is a project alternative. Well. It is exactly what it sounds like. A project alternative is a different version of your song. So it's saving a new session file, but as opposed to saving a whole separate logic session, that would be the entire size of a logic session, could be two, three, four gigabytes, depending on how large your sessions are, could be one gigabyte, who knows. But it could be a very large file. A project alternative doesn't really take up any more space because it's just telling logic what to do with the audio that's already stored in that one logic file. So this is huge for saving space on your computer. It's huge for uh, feeling free to delete things because you know you could pull it in from another project alternative if you needed to. It's just really freeing and gives you a lot of capability and saves you a lot of space on your computer. So let's jump into Logic and look at how to actually set up a project alternative. So a project alternative will be up under File and you'll see here Project Alternatives. And you'll see I already have several here and we'll talk about the ways that I use this in just a minute. But to do a new alternative, all you do is hit New Alternative and then you'll name it. We could name this Example project alternative and nothing happens after you hit save you won't see anything change except the name up here you'll see will now have that new name so what I've essentially done is created a new version that if I wanted to go in and delete stuff or change the mix or like you know one thing I'll do is a, a mix up a vocal up mix so I might have the same exact mix but then I do a second version of it where I just turn the vocals up two decibels and so I might do a vocal up mix so there's all sorts of things you can do with this it's a simple feature but it's a very powerful feature and I want to give you kind of four ideas basically the workflow that I found with project alternatives that keeps it reasonable you know I do a lot of project alternatives I'll be honest but it keeps it reasonable because I'm clear about what is my objective as I'm saving the new alternatives. I'm not just randomly saving a new alternative. You don't need to save a new alternative every time you add anything you recorded, for example. So pretty much for me, I s try to leave the main session until I'm done recording all the main parts. If I need to import anything, I'll import those into a new session. So for example here, if we look at our project alternatives for this song, this is a song we're still working on. But one look, Broke Royals, that is the name of the original session that has everything in it. I haven't changed that at all, so I, I don't touch that one at all. And then I cleaned it up. This is where I deleted things I didn't need, maybe consolidated some tracks, things like that. Uh, and then another guy sent me more parts, so I imported his parts, and now this is kind of my new like baseline mix, right? So this is keeping everything organized so I know, okay, the earliest I need to go back is this Benji import setup because that's gonna be after I have all the parts from Benji. And then I did a rough mix because we actually sent it back to the vocalist to re-record the vocals once we had all the parts in place because we record from around the state. I'm working with musicians that are all over. The nearest musician is an hour away from me. So we're working all over passing sessions back and forth and stuff. So I did a quick rough mix and then I actually created a retrack setup. So a whole different version of this session that looks different that's intentionally created for them to retrack the new vocals. I'll show you that and explain that in just a second. That's kind of the third slash fourth thing. So this first version is basically just for your cleaning and arranging. And with it, I really, really encourage you to always have the original version where you know you have everything so you can delete other things freely because you know you could always pull it in from another version another project alternative if you need to and if you don't know how to do that we're going to talk about that in tomorrow's video but that's the first way the second way is then for mixes so here i have a rough mix but honestly this mix is likely going to be more or less completely zeroed out i might save a few things if i really loved what i did there but for the most part it's going to be zeroed out when I start proper mixing. So then I create a version called Mix Setup, and that's the second way that I use this, which is to always be able to go back to a specific setup for my mix. That way if I get to a point with the mix, I'm like, I'm really not happy with this, and I just wanna start this mix over. I don't have to undo everything that I've done to get back to it. I can just go back to that mix setup, and that's gonna put me back, and I can go and start mixing. So I could start mixing again in 30 seconds, as opposed to having to delete everything and undo automation or whatever craziness. I could completely start and start fresh on a mix 
with like little to no setup, right? So I create a mix setup. So the first thing is like setting up your session. The second way is setting up for your mix. The third way is your different mix versions as you are doing revisions, as you're trying out ideas, things like that. So sometimes if I want to try something kind of crazy and I'm not sure if I'm going to like it, I'll save a version and then save a new version that's going to say like distorted drums cutting out in chorus or something like that where I'm drastically changing things in the song. And that way I know if I don't like it, I can just go back to the version right before it and I can always use that alternative. So for all of your mixes, that's three. And then four is for this Vox retrack setup type of thing. So this is if you have a different type of setup that you wanna set up. So here we're using it to specifically retrack the vocals. I'm gonna show you that session in a second. But another way you might do it is if, let's say you wanna do an electronic version and then you wanna try an all acoustic version and you wanna try like different versions but you wanna keep some of the key elements from your original song. Instead of like pulling them into a new song, you can create an alternative here and then save it. If we look up here, export alternative as project, we can then save that alternative, just that one alternative as a whole new session. It will have all the audio and all the information built into that session, but it'll be smaller and we'll have started from inside this session. So it's easier to set up as opposed to pulling things in from another session, at least in my opinion. Okay, let's look at that project uh, Vox retrack setup real quick. Okay, so here's that session and it looks very different than the other session that we were in because the goal here, I just wanted to have my rough mix and then all the vocals that she'd recorded previously, or they'd recorded, it's two vocalists on the song, so that they could compare the new vocals that they're working on to the old vocals that they'd already recorded and see if they like any of those takes better, if they wanna pull inspiration, anything like that. But they don't need the entire mix in there that I've done that has all sorts of processing on it. I wanted the smallest possible session here for them. So this session is just the instrumental mix that I did, the rough mix that I did, and then their vocal tracks so that they could compare to them. And that's it, that's all it is. But because everything is lined up here in the same way, the same physical location, as they record to this, I will. I can then pull those tracks back into my alternative so I can just have one session for me. I can import everything that they add to this session back into mine. So we're gonna look at that in tomorrow's video because that's really helpful. Okay, so that's project alternatives. As I said, it's not the coolest topic, but wow, can you imagine some uses for that? I would love to hear what ways you think that you'll use this in the comments below. I love project alternatives. Obviously, I get kind of excited about them. <laughs> and before you go, I wanna give you something. If you're struggling to get a mix that you're happy with, that you're proud of inside Logic, I put together something that's really gonna help you out. It's my six step checklist to a pro mix and it just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them specifically inside Logic. It's completely free from the link in the description below so be sure to pick it up. It's really gonna help you out, I promise. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna look at importing sessions into Logic. One thing at a time, I can